means it all came out of somebody's backyard, pond, canal, swimming pool, came off a golf course, ate the neighbor's dog, something like that. If you, that's funny. Some, some little girl's best friend gets devoured by an alligator. Somehow you find that amusing. I do too. Mad respect. Sophia does not. Now, if you've induced an alligator, a trap is usually called out. Hopefully, for you and your pets. He catches, removes the alligator. It doesn't matter if that alligator is three feet or thirteen feet. It takes them five minutes or five weeks. They charge you the same price every time, and that price is nothing. Alligator removal, absolutely free in the state of Florida. You got a raccoon in the attic, about four hundred bucks. It's eleven foot alligator in the backyard killing grandma. Don't worry, that's free. Alligator removal is free because the alligator is the payment. The trapper gets to keep the alligator, which he then takes to a processing plant where they will kill it. Anything gets paid for the valuable meat and hide. That's where you get alligator boots, belts, handbags, wallets, all that kind of stuff. The state of Florida kills about 8,000 nuisance alligators every single year. And usually just because they swam through somebody's backyard canal a couple of times. The state of Florida is also pretty smart. They save a tremendous amount of money, but more importantly for them, they save a liability by not hiring and paying a trapper. Just let them keep and harvest the animal. That way, every time a trapper's arm gets ripped off, there's no workman's compensation to worry about, no disability. They just scratch another name off a list and they get a new trapper. Now, the lucky ones, alligators that is, I would buy off those trappers or I trap myself. I am a licensed trapper here in the state of Florida. And yes, that was my mother's dream for me. <laughs> the day that I was born in Massachusetts. <laughs> it very much was not. Uh, I'm one of the very few, and I'm actually probably the only committed non-kill trapper in the whole state. Uh, not too many non-kill trappers in the state because, quite frankly, not many people are dumb enough to work 30 to 60 hours a week for free. Especially trying to save an animal that would love to rip your face off that first time that you meet them. Now, when I get a gator, they will generally come here overnight and then get relocated to Wildlife Sanctuary down at Homestead. And they can never truly go back to the wild. Any nuisance alligator that exceeds four feet in length, according to Florida state law, must be kept in captivity or be destroyed. Only two options. They tried to relocate these guys in the wild years ago, way back when they were endangered. Back then, if a gator ate your dog, they put them 50 miles out in the Everglades. Two months later, your new puppy would vanish. Same gator found his way home. So they would relocate him a second time to an even more remote location. Four or five months later, you turn around somehow, some way, he's back at the house of only. My sister had a boyfriend like that. <laughs> no, trust me, him I got rid of. Thanks, guys. Hey, go ahead, laugh. Make it seem like that didn't really happen. You know, you guys are adorable. Why are you guys all bunched up on one side? I feel like you're plotting against me or something. You're the ringleader. Now, uh, what we do in this pit is now we get a wrestling kind of sort of. There's three guys, one girl, that actually volunteer their time. We have to do these shows. We're not employees of the park, and that is due to liability again. Same as a trapper. Apparently all lawyers think alligators are absolutely ferocious. Uh, therefore, is that even comfortable? Therefore, the only money we do take in, believe it or not, does come solely through the donation basket. You see down the end, on the two days a week that I'm here, the money goes to the alligators. Not directly, because I tried that. They blow it all on gambling and booze. <laughs> now we, that's why half of you are in Florida right now. Now we kind of have this uh, fiduciary relationship where I use it to help Pay for the food, the vet bills, buy indicators from the other trappers, um, enclosures for sick and injured animals, equipment to catch these guys. That is what essentially funds the whole rescue. Now the alligator wrestling itself, that is not like wrestling on television. Yes, I actually have to say that. Some people really think there's gonna be like headlocks and body slams and young boys in particular get really disappointed. They think I'm gonna run around with a folding chair, smashing alligators in the head. It is not that kind of wrestling. If you came to see the old man versus beast thing, you're in the wrong place. These guys are part of my family in here. I'm not gonna kick or punch or hurt the alligator in any way. I'm not gonna run around poking, jabbing at him with a stick like some ever Billy, and they are not going to attack me, sorry. All alligator wrestling really is is the old Seminole Indian capture techniques mimicked in a pit like this with a few stunts thrown in. 
Now, uh, for those of you that may be, uh, there's a different reaction between the Gators and Crocs. You may have seen me catch on television. And the Gators you see in this pit. If I get this close to a wild alligator or a crocodile, it's going to do one of two things. And I guarantee you, neither of which is this. <laughs> He's going to either, A, make some huge explosive move to attack me, but that's going to be out of self-defense. That's him thinking, I'm the threat, I'm the predator. Uh, but more than likely, for that same reason, he'll make an equally explosive move, but only to escape. Either way, there'll be some massive explosion of energy. Massive explosion of energy. <laughs> All right, these guys don't do a whole lot of that stuff. Uh, they don't do that because, oh, there it is. Wow. Hey, you're scaring the kids. <laughs> oh, right, relax. That's your fault. Uh, they don't do that because almost every gator in this pit has been here long enough to realize that I am not going to hurt them. And once that kind of settles in, there is no real motivation to make these huge explosive movements they're so famous for. Every time you see a wild alligator or a crocodile, for that matter, making those explosive movements. That is absolutely exhausting for the animal. These guys are ectothermic or cold-blooded, so they really only have a handful of those moves in them before their bodies begin to build up with lactic acid, and eventually they can barely move. So if these guys all know that the worst possible outcome that could ever happen is me sitting on the back over here for like 10 minutes, telling some really bad jokes, it's not worth fighting me all out for the next 15 minutes then being totally exhausted for the next hour or two while the lactic acid slowly re-metabolizes. Just not worth the trade-off. If there's one thing they're good at, besides ruining my life, um, it's conserving energy. You look at a good-sized gator like Hector, Zeus, Debo, Darth Gator, these guys can easily go four or five months with no food at all. This is what they did for a living. They're really, really good at it. It doesn't mean they love being with friends and we take windy walks together at night. <laughs> Trust me, Zeus doesn't love me. Not like he used to. <laughs> you know, I still remember a time when you and I would just, we used to sit and we would talk for hours. You know, now I feel like we don't even communicate. Look, even now, I'm trying to reach out and you withdraw. Don't walk away. Listen, I can't fix it if I don't know what's broken. Please say something. I'm giving up on you. You know what the really sad part is? The sad part is I have these conversations with Zeus when nobody else is even here. <laughs> Now again, they don't like me, they obviously don't really dislike me. This is actually a lot like my parents' house around Christmas time. Everybody just kind of tolerates me because they feel obligated. I still want to know why you're all punched up on one side. You're just spread out everywhere. You guys, are you guys planning a surprise party for me? That's what's going on. I knew it. You guys are the best. Now I do have a couple of new ones I gotta watch out for. You're not new. Now I'm watch out for you. I do have a rotation system I use trying to make sure you get together only does one show throughout the day. It's actually Jigsaw Show. Watch out, stupid. Watch out, the two. Watch that new guy for me. He's got my back. Uh, Burgundy, let him go, please. Where's Brandon? Let's go. I don't trust Brandon. Get out of there. Hey, Jigsaw, you gotta do one show. I gotta do a haul. Who would you swamp thing get off of his head? <laughs> yeah, I just need one here right now. Get over here, Petunia. <laughs> what are you doing? It's amazing you don't want to go to work, but you always work there for the paycheck. <laughs> hey, listen, I'm telling you right now. You slap me in the butt with that tail, you're going to buy me some dinner and tell me you love me first. I'm not a prude. You Free Gatorade, if everybody wants that. Fresh. It's the best kind of Gatorade. That's where it comes from, kids. This Gator's actually been dead for two weeks. Until he starts to stink, I'm gonna keep using him. Sorry, Zeus. 
Yeah, maybe you should have put a ring on it. <laughs> Wide base, kid. Wide base. Oof. You made the asparagus or something? <laughs> Disgusting. Yeah, that new flavor of Gatorade will not catch on, I promise you. <laughs> asparagus flavored Gatorade. <laughs> now, if you're, we've got off the rails here. If you're a Seminole warrior back in the 1800s and you're out catching alligators, you're doing that to feed your family. But you always want to catch these guys alive. Alligator meat spoils very quickly in a hot Florida sun. So the first thing the Seminoles will want to do is tie the jaw shut. Gator this size, over 2,000 pounds of crushing power per square inch in the jaws. That is enough to crush any bone in your body. Go ahead, show them. Just kidding. <laughs> Tying the jaws by yourself could be a little challenging. You do need two hands to tie a good knot. And then something has to hold the mouth closed while you're doing that. Or you risk losing your fingers in the process. So the Seminoles came up with a technique they now refer to as bulldogging, holding the jaws closed with your chin and your chest. They would free your hands up, give you time, and take out leather or rope and tie a knot. If you want to take a picture, wait till both arms go out to the side, or you see the blood pouring down my throat. It's usually why I tell the kids to just stay in school. <laughs> okay, take out pictures quickly, please. Take out a rope, a couple of wraps, and tie a knot, and you have yourself a cotton tied alligator. Now, judging by the complete lack of applause, I'm assuming you people are not really impressed with me or the alligator right now. <laughs> hey, that's very touching. That was very touching. You know, there's really nothing better for my ego than pity and applause when you think about it. I mean, if you guys are looking for me after this show, I'll be checking into therapy. <laughs> Trying to redeem myself in a minute or two. In the meantime, we're going to touch on a few different parts of the alligator's anatomy. Eyes of an alligator, very well protected, very deep eye sockets. Anything threatens those eyes, they drop to the bottom of the eye sockets out of the way. Our thick, leathery eyelids come down that help protect them. Lower eyelids like you and I have, and he also has that third eyelid called a nictitating membrane. A little transparent lens you may have just seen move from front to back, and then back to front. It acts to clean dust and debris away from the eyes, and also kind of acts like a pair of goggles for the alligator of the water. Behind the eyes, the alligator's ears, little flaps right here. Even with these small ears, they still hear about as well as you and I on land, they also hear very well under the water. Uh, between the ears, behind the eyes, located right about there, alligator's brain. Alligator's brain is about the size of my thumb. They say there's only one animal in the entire world that has a smaller brain to body size ratio, and of course is the alligator wrestler. <laughs> I still don't get that joke. I'm gonna figure it out though. I mean, probably not today, but I'll figure it out. What are you, Stevie Wonder? <laughs> Listen, just relax. Uh, the bony plates you see a little bit in back, they're called scutes. They are solid bone osteoderms. They do two things for an alligator. Number one, it is armor plating. That protects them from predators and other alligators during the territorial and mating disputes. They also act like little solar panels. When it's cold, these guys lay out in the sun with that dark black skin the sun beats down, heats up that skin, and each one of those scutes is covered with little blood vessels. So that blood will heat up, circulate through the body, increasing the energy and metabolism. And you'll notice I said the skin was black and not green. Because almost every sign, almost every t-shirt, almost every cartoon, painting, stuffed animal, rubber toy, high school college mascot, you can see an alligator, it's almost always green. Uh, not too smart, but that's not green. Black. Now, it separates alligator wrestling from alligator capture, and of course, dangerous stunts, doing a couple of foolish things, like we'll do right now. First, it's called the Florida Smile, which is simply opening the alligator's mouth. You don't think of two tricks, knucklehead. <laughs> Back to Stevie Wonder. Here we go. You know, if he tried to bite me right now, this might look exciting. Right now, it looks like I'm trying to keep my dog in a bathtub. <laughs> and just crack your mouth open a little bit adds a level of excitement to this place to me. Stop messing around. Florida smile, showing all 80 teeth, 40 on top, 40 on the bottom. If you look in the back of his throat, it appears he has little to no throat opening. He has an oversized palatal valve or a glottis, which allows him to go underwater, capture food without drowning. He would usually then surface above the water to swallow that food. He likes to make it look dangerous. <laughs> He's a bit of a showman. You do realize without me, you'd be a suitcase, right? 
Let's just follow the script, okay? Listen, um, we're pretty much over two in applause right now. This is not a represent our best work. Ah, yes. Thank you. We'll, we'll both be in therapy after this one. Is this thing even on? Chat one, two. I was like Dave Chappelle all day. You guys rolled into town like a funeral. You're probably a laughing on the inside kind of crowd. That's, all. That's okay. I'll do this last trick and I'll let you guys go back to sleep. I make myself laugh if nobody else. Last trick's called a face off because if by chance I do mess up. And listen, this is also going to show you exactly what a bachelor's degree in psychology is not worth. <laughs> From the University of Massachusetts, anyway. My parents waste a lot of money on college. They don't really appreciate the fact that I make bad jokes about it in an alligator pit. <laughs> 54 years old and my dad is still telling me to give him his money back. Yeah, trust me, that would never happen. Last trick, no hero stuff. We almost made it. The drugs are wearing off. I don't know what to do. It's the last trick. Listen, that suitcase thing can still happen, my friend. Look at me. I make, you want to stand up? Is that your thing? Hey, I make one phone call and you're full of zippers. I can have you in check baggage by next Thursday. That's a joke. You know I love you. Stop messing around. I wasn't going to tell you this. It's supposed to be a surprise, but you ruined it. Look over there. I have a whole plate of Girl Scout cookies with your name on it, okay? <laughs> and I make them with the real Girl Scouts in them. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> Did I feel bad for those kids? They came to my house peddling shortbread cookies. They deserved it. <laughs> I knew there were thin mints in the trunk. <laughs> Think we can all agree, show me two kinds of Girl Scout cookies. Thin mints and Samoas, that's it. You take those tag-alongs and don't see, don't even have a driveway. Kid. And listen, the box of Thin Mints is still mismarked. That is not a joke. I've been writing letters and emails from the 20s. I'm dead serious. Next time you get a box of Thin Mints, you read it carefully. It says something ridiculous like, eight servings. <laughs> On what planet? There are two servings tops. I think they give you one sleeve and the other. That's in case you're on a hunger strike and you have to share. Because if you're home alone and that box is in the freezer. Sometimes people This, this smells amazing. Get off the alligator, best part of the show for me, probably for Jigsaw too. Ooh, I like the way you walk, boy. Hey, I know that must be jelly, because jam don't shake like that. It's amazing how fast they move, isn't it? Wow. That's why you have to run zigzag. And otherwise, they'd never catch you. They started that whole thing. You ever heard of that? Just an alligator run zigzag? That is the dumbest thing I ever heard in my entire life. And that's not your fault. They have been pushing that on students and tourists down here for like 50 years. Don't run zigzag, just run. <laughs> Listen, if you're gonna do anything, you trip the kids and you walk away with dignity. <laughs> not, your, not your own, you clap for that, you sickos. <laughs> not your own kids if you can help it. But if it comes down to it, come on, man. They are smaller and faster than we are. They got a much better chance. That kid is so hopped up on Mountain Dew and Skittles right now, that gator has no chance. That kid will be doing that reverse matrix flip where he's running upside down. The gator's like, oh crap, he's on Skittles. Nobody got time for that. All right, guys, uh, with that, that is the end of the show. Again, anybody in the basket down there does go.